Hey, I'm Jack, and welcome to another Kerbal Space Program 2 video, where we are going to be constructing and somewhat trying to fly the iconic space shuttle, as well as building and placing in orbit my iteration of the good old Skylab type station, and that's the only success for today. I'm sorry if I sound a tad bit out of it, if you can say that, but I've not been sleeping all too well, or at all sometimes, like literally last night. For almost a month at this point. I also stopped drinking coffee almost entirely, which is funny because I have a cup with me right now, only that keeps me in a working order. Now, I definitely went more for the real looks than the obvious Kerbal type approach when it comes to the space shuttle, and I think that might be the reason it doesn't really fly as intended. At least I take great pride in the wings, especially the forward section, which is tilted downwards like the real life counterpart. I've also tried to get the tail fin to look the part, but let me know how I did at last. I've seen most people when building a shuttle would just attach a docking port at the forward as a nose cone, but that's an easy approach. I went a step further and have built a truss construction in the cargo area of the vehicle that allowed me to get the docking port in the correct spot. Currently we are limited by what parts we have available in the stock game and since there's really no mods as of yet, we need to either skip some steps or improvise. I managed to get the vehicle as close to real life as possible for right the second prior to any updates post launch. Anyways, this was a complicated video to make, kind of, as I've built like 4 different vehicles, 3 of which are classic rockets and only one worked really. And that is the correct placement for the docking port. Just a little trust thingy. I just played back the voiceover the, and realized that even my accent is bad. Hope you can forgive me. I might be getting sick or that's the lack of sleep. So I really tried to get the orbital maneuvering engines right. You can see me sorta of experimenting there with different types of fuel tanks. I mean, it's just something in me, you know, that makes me spend way too much time on details whenever I build a shuttle in KSP-1 or KSP-2. The saddest part is when the game basically says nope to my face and it makes me want to uninstall. But ha! Ah! I'm persistent and always keep on going. I approached the problem from a different angle and said to myself, not that I talked to myself all that much, <laughs> but I said, um, let's just do it the simplest way as that is the engineering way of handling things. I've also decided to make the shuttle longer, so it has more cargo capacity and looks more realistic. You're gonna see that part in a second. Now imagine me chilling in my chair, having time of my life building this magnificent piece of tech, thinking, boy, this is gonna fly so nicely, it will allow me to transport space station parts, and I can even show that to people. Little did I know what was about to happen after like two hours of work. It literally took me that long to finally get the stack completed. If you guys have any suggestions and ideas as to why it's not flying as it was supposed to, please let me know down in the comments. You may even want to drop a like or a dislike at this point. But here's my theory though. For one, thrust to weight ratio is way too low for it to be able to get itself to orbit, not mentioning cargo, of course. That means that the RS 25 like engines are significantly too weak and should be boosted by another like 200 kN of thrust in simplest terms. Second, the wings. Since I clipped them together for the look's sake, they may interfere with the air flowing over the surface and therefore rendering the vehicle inoperable. I'm not sure exactly as to why that is, as I had no chance of testing the gliding capabilities yet. I plan on coming back to the shuttle project once the game has been updated and fixed enough. Ok, third and final reason that came up in my head. The forward cone of the orange fuel tank creates way too much drag than it is supposed to. That may actually be the case with this entire vehicle, since even these massive SRBs don't necessarily help all that much. When it comes to simply steering the craft, I hope I don't have to mention the weirdness that I, I think everyone experienced with the SAS and overall wobbliness as well. This is the time to construct the orange tank itself and strap more boosters. I just played a bit with color schemes and different coupling methods, 
finally settled with a big radial decoupler as the aft strap and that aerodynamic shaped forward strap. Honestly, now when I'm editing and making this voiceover, I question whether it is actually built to scale. It looks quite right. Oh, well, that was unplanned. But it looks quite right and also a tad wrong. It is hard to say. I went for no back cap on the tank as not to add unnecessary mass. And since this is KSP and we are always adding more boosters, I place the SRBs in the correct spots, I believe. And I've decided to go ham with separatrons, but worry not, these guys did not change a thing and soul staging the SRBs caused the vehicle to explode. You can see me happily creating action groups for all the important stages of shuttle ascent and operations, such as SRB separation and making sure the separatrons fire correctly. I've also bound the orange tank separation along with the small engine so that it clears the orbiter and allows for a safe burn after. Finally we got all the groups set to what I wanted, we could just place this stack over the ground and attach launch clamps somewhat like they were attached to the real life counterpart. What's left now is checking the staging obviously and getting ready for the huge moment when it leaves the launch pad and take flight straight into orbit. Or not. We can only truly hope. But here it is. Main engine start. And lift off of the space shuttle. Yeah, it wasn't as great as I expected. Launch footage is played at in real time and the rest of the flight is at 4 times speed for the viewer's sake. It almost immediately started turning to port for a reason only known to the Kraken and probably the devs. It is truly a very bumpy ascent and against Kerbin rotation too. Not to mention how scared our brave Kerbal must have been knowing there's no launch escape present and the only way out is to wait for the SRB, SRB flame out. Guys, I've tried nearly everything I could come up with in a few hours. I even went as far as changing the offset angle of the engines on the shuttle, made sure the control surfaces work properly and as you see I played with the throttle to balance out the mass and solid rocket booster so that it could at least for a minute go just straight up. Surprisingly the SAS and pointing directly up seemed to help but as of now the shuttle is beyond saving. So we changed the plans and built a Skylab like station. Now you see the orbiter disintegrate and that brings us to our space station build. As you can see I got some pieces already waiting for me so I just gonna, I'm just gonna add the antenna, the solar array it is really nothing complicated. A simple but to me good looking build slapped onto a rocket and sent into orbit. This one worked perfectly from start to finish. The purpose of the station is quite unique as you can imagine and it is that it serves no purpose at all, as space stations are just for show as they were in KSP-1. I'm hoping it's gonna change as the game progresses forward. What I want is the need to have a station to maybe refuel at or use already attached vehicle as a sort of tag or better yet, science or experiments that can only be conducted on a space station like it currently is being done on the ISS. Yeah, this is mainly to show that yes, I can. Also, space stations are cool, aren't they? <laughs> Let me get my shallows in order and we may build an actual ISS replica in orbit and keep our fingers crossed that it's not gonna deorbit itself out of the blue. Don't you just hate when your hard work burns in the atmosphere, <laughs> killing the crew on board? <laughs> I for sure wouldn't want to become a crispy astronaut. I mean, this is just me running wild with the commentary up to the point of near completion of the carry rocket. What's left to do is to add struts, build a fairing, more struts, staging and of course struts. As you can see there was a slight detour in our build, but if you want an actual useful tip though, strut stages together. For example, shred a fuel tank at the top to the one at the bottom if they are meant to decouple. Struts will of course stage themselves and disappear. The build phase is near over, 
And as you may have noticed, we closed in on the testing part that I sometimes actually tend to do, rather than just send it and pray to the Kraken. Seems like it's time to launch! Ignition, main engine start, and lift off to the low Kerbin orbit to conduct research, allowing the Kerbal kind to progress beyond. <laughs> okay, since we got that out of the way, I admit, if you look closely, I, I definitely made this racket way too wide for my taste, and maybe I should have painted at least the adapter black. But nothing is lost, there's going to be more launches. Now, since I've said pretty much most of what I want, I needed to share about the footage itself, uh, be my guest to admire the ascent profile and the flight. Meanwhile, I'm going to give you a little insight into, you know, my life so that you may get to know me better. I'm 26 and a student studying national security <laughs> and funny story here. As I need to complete six months of certain internships somewhere of my choice, so I had a plan set up and in motion, all happy that it's going well at least with that, and the boss basically emailed me and she said they can, air quote, hire me but only for a month. I'm like, sure, okay, but what about the next five months? I didn't of course email that to her because that would have been rude and she's a nice person. I'm kind of pissed though, time is running out and it will be tough to finish it before I enroll into another university. But wait, there's a twist! I've been planning on changing fields completely and wanted to go for aerospace engineering, even without any prior STEM background. To result I learned that stuff quickly. <laughs> but there's nothing for me to learn if I can't enroll. Ah, life, right? Um, well. I've lost passion to, for my faculty a long time ago, but decided to stay and get through the last year anyway, since it would have been a waste if I switched then. Ending on that note, we are headed for space! Yay! <laughs> All that's left to do is to perform a final burn and get our orbit going. The ship is doing the spinny thingy right now, but that is, turns out, pretty easy to correct. All we gotta do is disable the SAS and manually steer the rocket using RCS, and then do the burn paying close attention to the nav ball and to our perigee indicator. Welcome to space as we reach our desired orbit of 150 to 160 kilometers, give or take. But since I kinda like to make it as perfect of a circle as I can, we are ultimately aiming for 145 kilometer orbit. As you're gonna see there in a second when we're gonna perform the final burn. And here it is, 146 by 142 after separation. What we can do now is deploy our solar panels and do our best to stop yet another spin that we got into just by having the torque enabled, turns out. Now let's disable any unwanted steering authority and time warp a little bit to stabilize the vehicle and it is time to admire our work of art humbly orbiting Kerbin. Oh, do I feel the pride. <laughs> what you guys gonna see next in a second is a pure fight between me and the Kraken and his glitch army. The weird looking rocket with a station expansion module is the mention in the beginning stage of the station that was produced to ensure a small docking port present. Of course, my luck ran out and we ended up with, you guessed, <laughs> spinning craft again. <laughs> that day, most of the craft I've built suffered from that problem and sometimes disabling torque was the solution, but other times that made no impact. Nevertheless, I attempted rendezvous with station which was convenient thanks to the sticky markers mod. Link to all my mods, including markers and better time warp, are in the description below. Having said that, I think some of my game problems might be connected to that time warp unlock mod. Somehow installation of that tool renders my save file corrupted, I think? As some major functions like revert, <laughs> I can't. I see the spinning craft, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but some major functions like revert to launch or VAB were locked 
or that I couldn't quick save or, or save at all. So, guys, test at your own risk, but if you want to take my advice, first get the mods, then make a new campaign. I gave up after basically two days of trying to make the two stages together. I figured, since we have a station anyway, why not bring some Kerbals on board? I've constructed possibly the simplest rocket of this whole adventure, packed the capsule with fresh meat, I mean, brave Kerbals, <laughs> and went on with the plan. It was seemingly a smooth ride up to a certain point when we were supposed to get rid of the launch escape system. Remember when I said that none of the saving methods work? Yep, I had to redo the whole launch to test the rocket again. And then again. And again. You can see me struggle with all the buttons I could press with the mouse and the keyboard at that point. Turns out, recessing docking port in a docking port makes it impossible to undock and we were stuck with a wobbly launch escape tube. Yeah, well, apparently an observer cannot leave an active vessel, even though said vessel is just trash tower with no fuel. I kept on wobbling my way up into suborbital trajectory, just trying to bring the video to a higher level for you to enjoy. KSP kept slapping me right in the face though. I finally reloaded a really all safe file, still with the station in orbit at least, and I've added boosters, staying true to the logic that if something goes wrong, you need more boosters. I've even corrected the escape tower ports so that they were perfectly aligned and seemingly shouldn't cause future problems. Probably you can now feel my frustration as I'm trying to click the big green button that says launch another wall. I ended up going back to KSP screen and clicking manually onto the pad and launching it that way. The only decent thing about this whole ordeal at the end here is that I didn't strut boosters to the main core and nothing was wrong with that. We reached the end of the line. There's two videos on screen, my previous one and KSP2 music I got from the game files. Thank you for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed or a dislike if you didn't, and I see you in the next adventure.